In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at quadratic inequalities, and I'm going to do four exam style questions. So the first one here says n is an integer such that 3n take 5 is less than or equal to 1, and 2n squared take 5n is less than 3. Find all the possible values of n. Please pause the video now if you want to give this question a go, and also pause the video on each other question if you want to give those a go as well. And just before we get into this one, keep in mind you do need to be confident with factorizing quadratics before you get into quadratic inequalities. Okay, so we are looking for possible values of n. Well, this is a linear inequality, so you should be okay with this. Uh, let's focus on this one firstly we've got 3n take 5 less than or equal to 1. you can rearrange this now just as you would an equation and we want to make n the subject so add that 5 to the right hand side we'll have 3n less than or equal to 1 plus 5 is 6 and then n is less than or equal to 6 divided by 3 is 2 so n is less than or equal to 2 that's my first inequality now let's have a look at this quadratic inequality we've got 2n squared take 5n less than three. Firstly, we want everything on the left-hand side and zero on the right-hand side, as you would see a normal quadratic equation. So we'll have two n squared take five and take three less than zero. And now what you want to do is find your critical values or where this quadratic equation will equal zero on the x-axis. So the way that I do this is I say, I'm looking for the critical values and they will occur when this quadratic equals zero. So 2n squared take 5n take 3 equals zero. That's going to be in my critical values. And then go about solving this quadratic equation as you normally would. So look to see if you can factorize it. If you can't factorize, use the quadratic formula or completing the square. In this case, we can factorize this. Think of factors of 3 and 2 that make 5. We can use uh, 3 and 1. And actually, it needs to be negative 5. So this would have to be 3 times 2, which is 6 negative 6 plus 1 would give me negative 5. So this is going to be, if I've got 2n and n, 2 needs to be multiplied by 3. That needs to be a negative 6 and a plus 1. That would give me 2n squared take 5n take 3. And this is equal to 0. So then my solutions for this quadratic equation are n equal to negative a half or n equal to 3. They are my critical values. So think about a quadratic graph. You need to know what these look like. You can either have a uh, parabola facing upwards or a parabola facing downwards. And what determines which way it's facing is the coefficient of n squared. Because it's positive, we have that smiley face, right? Facing upwards, positive, happy, smiling face, quadratic. So now draw an x-axis here and write down your critical values on that x-axis or in this case it's an n axis, but either way, we've got negative a half and three. And this quadratic is positive because the coefficient of n squared is positive, so it would be facing this way. So you can draw a little quadratic in if you like, and then look at the inequality sign. We want this quadratic less than zero. So this line represents zero. We want the values to be below this axis, so we want all of the values in this range. So between negative a half and three. So this is going to be my range for n for this particular inequality. We have n between negative a half and three. So for quadratic inequalities, you can think of the shape of the graph and use the critical values to find the range of, of that unknown in there. Also think about if this inequality was the other way around, we'd be looking for values less than a half, negative a half and greater than three. So it's always important to check which way the inequality is facing. So going back to the question then, it said n is an integer that satisfies both of these inequalities. So we need n to be less than or equal to two and between negative a half and three. So what are all of the values that satisfy both of the, those inequalities? Also keep in mind n is an integer well, we would have zero. Zero satisfies both of these. So we could write down the possible values. Possible values are zero. Uh, one also satisfies those two and two as well because n is also equal to two. So they are my possible values of n. Remember, it had to be an integer. Okay, it can't be three because n is only less than three, not less than or equal to three. All right, so that's the first question there. Final answer, zero, one, and two. On to the next one. 
Question two says the diagram shows a proposed layout for a building plot. The measurements are in meters. The area allocated to the house is a square. Okay, so here we have the diagram and we have equations for the dimensions. The question goes on, according to planning regulations, the area for the garden must be at least twice the area of the house. Find the range of possible values for X, show all of your working. So here you need to come up with the quadratic inequality from the information in the question. Well, here's the garden. How could we represent the area of the garden? Well, that would be the length times the width. So 3x plus 4 multiplied by x take 2. And this needs to be at least twice the area of the house. What does at least mean? It means greater than or equal to. It can equal the area of the house, but it has to be equal to or greater than. So we could write this as greater than or equal to twice the area of the house. What's the area of the house? It's x, the side of the house, squared. So x squared. So this is going to be 2 times x squared, twice the area of the house. So now we have our quadratic inequality. We just need to go ahead and solve this as we did the first question. Firstly, expand out these double brackets. We'd have 3x squared take 6x plus 4x take 8 greater than or equal to 2x squared. And then like we did before, we want everything on the left-hand side and zero on the right-hand side. So take that 2x squared away from the left-hand side. 3x squared take 2x squared is just x squared. Negative 6x plus 4x is negative 2x. Take 8, and this is greater than or equal to zero. Now we have our quadratic inequality. Let's go ahead and find our critical values. So we write this as an equation, x squared take 2x take 8 equals zero. And again, see if we can solve this either by factorizing or quadratic formula if necessary. But in this case, again, we can factorize. So factors of 8 that make 2 are 4 and 2. We'll have uh, negative 4 plus 2. That will give us negative 2 and negative 8. So our critical values then are x equal to 4 or x equal to negative 2. Again, draw out your x-axis and write in your critical values. So we've got 4 and negative 2. And think about the shape of that quadratic. Again, it's a positive quadratic, so it's facing up. It's a smiley face. Okay, and this is greater than or equal to zero, so it's these parts here. It's above the x-axis, above the line. Just a quick comparison to part A. Here we were looking for less than zero, so we looked below the line. Here we're looking at greater than or equal to zero, so we're looking above the line here. So we have two possibilities here. We have x less than or equal to negative two, or x uh, greater than or equal to 4 because we're looking at the x values greater than 4 or less than 2 to be above the line there. Okay, then go back to the question. In this case, we need to think of the context. So if x was negative 2, let's think about this equation or any of these equations. Well, here we can't have a length of negative 2. So negative 2 is not a valid answer in this case, in this question. So therefore, x greater than or equal to 4 must be our solution here. Let's just check. So we could plug that in. Let's plug it into each expression and see what we get. So if x was equal to 4, this would be 2. This would be 12 plus 4. This would be 16. And this would be 4 times 4. The area over here would be 16. In here, we'd get 32. So you can see there, it is double the area of the house when x equals to 4. And if x was any number greater than 4, that relationship would still hold, I guess, that we still have the double, double the area. So we could try, for example, 5, this would be 3, and 15 plus 4 is 19, and over here we'd have 25. So what do we get for the area? We get 30, 57, and you can see, again, clearly that is greater than double the area of the house. Okay, so our final answer there, find the range of possible values of x, we get x greater than or equal to 4 for a final answer. Okay, on to the next question. 
The next question is a double inequality. It says solve x squared plus seven over eight, greater than seven and less than 11. We can use a similar approach to the previous questions, but there's just a few extra steps you need to add in for double inequalities. We can start off by simplifying and make making x squared the subject, or you can immediately split this into two inequalities. I'm going to do it that way. I would say this is the safest approach. So split it into two inequalities. You have x squared plus seven over eight, less than 11, and we have x squared uh, plus seven over eight. Sorry, that should be and not or. And we have x squared plus seven greater than seven. Okay, so split it into two when you've got a double inequality, a double quadratic inequality, and then rearrange as you would an equation to make x squared the subject. So multiply by eight, this will be x squared plus seven less than 88 and then x squared less than 88 take seven is 81. And over here, multiplied by eight would have x squared plus seven greater than 56. And then x squared greater than 56 take seven is 49. Now, when you get to this point for an equation, usually you would take the square root of both sides and then you would say x is less than uh, plus or minus nine. Now in this case with inequalities, it becomes a bit more complicated when you introduce negatives. So what I would suggest here is to simplify it a little bit for yourself, rather than taking the square root here, bring that 81 over to the left hand side and it becomes the same, we use the same strategy as we would a normal quadratic inequality. So I would suggest this way is the safest and the easiest approach. Then this is the difference of two squares. So you can write this as x uh, plus nine and x take nine less than zero. And then this is the same as when we factorize these ones up here. You can find your critical values, but looking at this one, hopefully you can just see your critical values will be negative nine and nine. And if you like, draw out your x-axis you don't actually have to do this every time. You might be getting good at actually doing this without the diagram, but you can draw the uh, x-axis out to be safe. Our critical values, again, we said were negative nine and nine, and this would be a positive quadratic, so it's facing this way. And we are looking for when it is less than zero, so in between negative nine and nine. So for this part of this inequality, we have x between negative nine and nine. Let's focus on this one now. Again, rather than taking the square root here, take that 49 from the left-hand side. We'll have x squared take 49 greater than zero. And here, again, using the difference of two squares, we have x take seven and x plus seven greater than zero. The critical values there will be negative seven and seven. And in this case, we want it greater than zero. So again, we have a quadratic, a positive quadratic. And this time we want it greater than zero. So this is going to be X less than negative seven over here to the left of negative seven and X greater than positive seven. Okay, to the, to the right of positive seven. So this is my range of values for this part of this inequality. To combine those two then, we have X between negative nine and nine and X less than negative seven and greater than seven, it would essentially be in these little parts here. These are my possible values for X to satisfy this double quadratic inequality. So for a final answer here, we're going to have two ranges. We're going to have X uh, less than negative seven and greater than negative nine, or we can have X greater than seven and less than nine, this one here. Okay, so that is my final answer there. X between negative nine and negative seven and X between seven and nine. And I guess you could test this out. So substitute eight into this expression here. Eight squared is 64 plus seven is 71 divided by eight. That's going to be just less than nine. So between eight and nine, that is clearly between seven and 11. Um, and then, well, you could try 8.5 or 7.5, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to do a quick check of eight and I'm happy with that. So there you go, that was the third question. On to the final one. This is slightly different. This says, find the quadratic inequality that is represented by this solution set. So they give you a number line, and they said x is between negative one and one. You need to find the quadratic inequality that would give you this 
particular solution set. For this question, I would start with an equation and think of these negative one and one as your critical values. So what equation would give you those two critical values? Well, one possible equation would be x squared equal to one. So if you solve this for x, you would know that x is equal to plus or minus one. Once you have that equation, x squared equal to one, then think about how you can turn that into an inequality. So if I take that equation and rewrite it as a quadratic equal to zero, look at this expression now, x squared take one. What sort of quadratic is that? It's a positive quadratic, so it would be like this. And if we want the solutions to be between negative one and one, it's going to be less than zero, right, below the line. So then we could write this as x squared take one less than or equal to zero, less than or equal to because these are filled in circles. If these were empty circles, it would just be less than. Okay, so that's one approach you could take here. Think of the equation that gives you those critical values and then think about where on that quadratic graph we want the solutions to be. Are they greater than or less than? In this case, because it's between negative one and one, it's less than zero. Okay, so final answer there, x squared take one less than or equal to zero is one possibility. Can you find another possible solution to that question? Let me know in the comments if you do. If you want the questions from this video, I'll leave a PDF linked in the description, as well as further practice problems you can have a go at to help with your revision of quadratic inequalities. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.